<laughs> I think I heard about that one. Yeah, that's the only one I know. I think you have to, to put the mic even up a bit, a bit closer. To How's that? That's much better. Getting old. So, a big, a big question of mine is, is it true that you bought your own tailor suit made? Your own tailor-made suit and a Rolex watch when you wanted the role as James Bond, but the fact that they chose you was because you broke a stuntman's nose. Well, some of it's true. I think, uh, yeah, I did. Uh, the first time I was working in Paris as a male model, and I had sideburns down here and longer hair than the Englishman, and the other cut suit, and I uh, went to an interview on my own, because I didn't have an agent, I'd never acted before. And so I snuck into the interviews and I saw all the other guys were dressed like James Bond. And uh, I little, looked a little out of place, looking French. And so uh, I went and got my hair cut at Kurt the Barber, where Sean got his cut. I said, give me one of those James Bond things, it looks bloody awful. Shave, well, yeah, really shave. And then I went to his tailor and they had a suit that he didn't like, that was made. And I bought it. it. cost 100 pounds at the time, which was a lot of money. And uh, they lengthened the sleeves for me while I waited. And I had his suit. I already owned a Rolex watch. And I walked into, uh, this time I didn't wait to talk to the receptionist. I ran up the stairs to the casting office, because I'd been there before and I saw where it was. And she said, hey, wait, wait, where are you going? And as I got there, the casting director was talking to Harry Salzman on the phone. And I just stood at the door with the Rolex showing it. And he said, who are you? Who are you? I said, uh, I heard you're looking for James Bond. And he said, Harry, there's a guy here that looks just like him. And he said, bring him over. Now, if this guy hadn't have been on the phone, he would have found out I was full of shit. Because <laughs> I, I was, I, and he's taking me across the road and he's saying, well, where have you been? What, what acting have you done? And I said, well, I've worked in Romania, and Russia, and China, and everywhere I thought they couldn't check on. <laughs> so I hadn't done it. I'd never spoken in front of a camera in my life. And so we get into the office, and Harry Salzman's got his feet up on the desk with his shoes off, and he's talking on the phone. He points at the seat in front of him. Sit there. And I'm thinking, like hell, in front of those feet. So I went over and looked out the window, which was perfect. They wanted a guy with this kind of feeling of insurance, you know, self-assured. And I wasn't self-assured, it's just I didn't know what to do. And then uh, he got up and he put his shoes on, he came over to me at the window and he said, uh, uh, tell me your life story, what have you done? I said, I just told him, let him tell you, because <laughs> I couldn't remember all the lies I told him. <laughs> and so, did you get that? I had been lying to the casting director and then I couldn't remember what I told him. So I said, let him tell you. And he liked that too, I found out this later. He said, you know what turned me on about you? You wouldn't do anything you were told. I, kept, I asked you to sit there, you looked out the window, I asked you, <laughs> tell me what you've done. You told me to get the other fellow to do it. By this time, I was shitting myself. I said, I'm way over my head here. I've gone too far, I've got to get out of here, or I'll make a fool of myself, because this guy's really tough, you know? And uh, it's intimidating, you know, it's a boardroom, and, you could tell that there were high flight and businessmen, and I wasn't that, so. He said, um, the casting director, he said, when's the director gonna be here? And he said, four o'clock tomorrow, sir. And they talked to him like, sir, sir, sir. And he said, you'll be here at four o'clock tomorrow, and uh, we'll see you then. And I thought, this is my out. I said, I can't be here. And he said, what? I said, like, I'm, I'm working in Paris on a film which was bullshit again. They said, how much are they paying you? I said, 500 pounds, which was 50 weeks wages. They were an average Englishman. I said, they're not gonna pay that, I'm out of here. 500 pounds. He said, go down and see Stanley Sapel. He'll give you 500 pounds and be here at four o'clock tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I can't even get out of it now. <laughs> so I go down and Stanley tries to get me 250. He's still alive, this guy, Stanley Sapel. And I said, no, no, it's okay, I'll see you later. And he said, no, no, wait. What, what's the money for? He didn't even know. They just said, give this guy 500 pounds. <laughs> so I got the 500 pounds and I had this woman who sent me there in the first place, Maggie Abbott, she was the agent. And I wasn't with her. I just took her out one night. <laughs> and uh, She said, you'd make a good bond. <laughs> and anyway, I don't know what made her think that. But meanwhile, uh, I, uh, 
I called her up and she said, how'd you do? I said, they gave me 500 pounds to come back and see the director tomorrow. She said, yeah, right. How'd you do? I said, seriously, they gave me 500 pounds. She said, where are you? I said, I'm in a phone booth. She said, I'm coming down. So she came down and wanted to see the check. She couldn't believe it. She said, no one's been paid to come back to see somebody on a casting call. I said, well, there's the money. And so uh, the next day, oh, Peter Hunt's coming back. I went looking for an acting lesson. And uh, I thought, i got to have at least one lesson. <laughs> and I found this guy who later became my manager, which blew, blew me doing a second Bond film. But meanwhile, this guy uh, gave me a little acting lesson, and I get to see the director the next day, and the director is really pissed off. He didn't want to come back from Switzerland. He had things to do there still, and uh, Harry said, no, I want you to see this guy. Get your butt over here. And uh, I'm looking at this guy, he's really angry at me, you can tell. And he says, now tell me what you've done. And I thought, I'll go through these lies again, or not. And I said, Peter, I've never acted in my life. And he looked at me, and then he went blank. And then he started belly laughing. He said, you've never acted in your life? He says, so they brought me back from Switzerland to see you. I said, well, I've never done a thing in front of, I'm sorry. And he said, I can't act. I said, I've never acted. He said, you can't act? He said, you fooled the most ruthless man I've ever met in my life. <laughs> he said, stick to your story, I'll make you the next James Bond. Anyway, I got over to see Harry with Peter and he said, get him out of here. He said, close peg. Model, now model. Get him out of here. We'll be a laughing stock in the industry. And Peter said, no, I want to test him. And they took me out to Harry Salson's place. I never went near the studio until I got the job, the last scene. After four months of testing, they kept wanting me to ride a horse, swim, love scene was fun. Um, <laughs> and then the girl was had big boobs, so it was hard to get my hands around. It was like, I wasn't used to that. And <laughs> meanwhile, uh, then we went to the studio for a fight scene. Uh, and the stuntman gave me like a five minute lesson to have a fight by missing these people and you duck and you miss. And we choreographed it all, and then once the camera rolled, I got a little bit excited. And I hit the Russian on the chin and nose, and broke his nose, and messed him up. And he was laying on the floor, and I go, oh shit, what do I do now? And I went over to help him up, and uh, Harry came past and got hold of me, and he said, we're going with you. <laughs> you tell anybody, and the deal's off. And so, I said, what about him? And he's trying to get up. And I'm thinking he's going to kill me, but he played a serious Russian wrestler, this guy. And uh, he said, don't worry about it, get lost, until uh, the press conference. So that's how it came about. Any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have one from the audience.